good evening everyone and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today I'm excited to go over to Lakeland, Florida where we find young 12-year-old Gavin Graham. Gavin, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. Glad to be here. How are you? I'm doing fine, man. So what's been going on over the winter time here when you haven't been racing? Uh, during the winter, we have been making our transition from go-karts to sledding cars. And we have also been doing countless laps at uh, Arvindale Speedway. We have also been um, working hard to get these programs up to speed. And how's that been going? Uh, been going really well. We've been doing a really good job. Yeah, I came over and spent an afternoon with you over at Auburndale when you were in the pro truck and looked like you guys were getting up to speed really, really quick. So uh, how have you been personally dealing with a racing ban that's been going on and all the coronavirus stuff? How you been dealing with that? Well, this pandemic has definitely changed our country and racing, but we have been fortunate to be able to go to our local track at Arvindale Speedway, and we've been practicing there with countless laps and pre countless practices with my good driver, coach, and spotter at Howell. Yeah, so let me ask you a question. Now, talk just a little bit about your driver coach, because I know he's a okay. very, very famous uh, driver in his own right in his time. So tell us a little bit about him. Um, Ed Howell, he is a, he used to race in the truck series for NASCAR and he has won many uh, goodies uh, races down at the NASCAR tracks. I'm not really sure which NASCAR tracks. I know he won at Bristol, I believe, and many other tracks yeah. in the NASCAR series. Absolutely. Very accomplished racer and and you've got to feel really excited to be able to have the opportunity to have someone like that to work with and and to school you. I know I got a chance to spend a little bit of time with him, and uh, he he he's uh, he's definitely sold on Gavin Graham. He thinks you're the real deal, man. Yes, sir. All right. So, with the uh, coronavirus in place and everything, have you been doing virtual school? Yes, sir. And what do you think about virtual school? Are you ready to go back to real school or were you okay with it? Um, well, I'm more of a face-to-face -face learner. I'm not really a virtual learner because um, when you're there, uh, you don't get distracted as easily. You don't uh, get distracted with all your family around the house. But uh, virtual school has been a lot easier because you can do all your work in about one to two days and then you can spend the rest of the weekend or the week with uh, your dad and work in the shop. All right. So did you have a particular class that you really liked uh, as far as the virtual side? Um, I really like science because you do a lot of um, uh, assignments and you do a lot of um, experiments as uh, what I should say and uh, you can do a lot of experience from home so the DIY stuff okay that's that's cool I never really thought about doing labs and stuff like that but they'll they'll actually give you some labs that you can actually do there in your home yes sir all right so if you had to pick one of the courses that was the most challenging to do online which class would that have been I would have to say it would be fabrication lab because you have to do a lot of stuff with like making stuff and then you have to like send pictures and sometimes the pictures don't go through. So it's really difficult because you have technical difficulties. It's really hard. Tell me a little bit about fabrication lab. What, what does that actually entitle? Fabrication lab, you, uh, you do a lot of uh, manufacturing with, uh, you do like 3D printers. You also do laser cutters. You do a lot with, uh, construction tools such as band saws and circular saws and all that. You also do um, Tinkercad that's part of the stuff with um, 3D printing. You also do laser cutting a lot of um, and a lot of uh, acrylic stuff. Right. That's absolutely pretty cool. I could see like, I don't know if you guys still have it now, but when I went to school, which was a long, long, long time ago, we had show and tell. So I could see like in fabrication lab, you're like, hey, I'm bringing over a piece of my dad's equipment 
and bringing over one of those big cranes, pulling that up in front of the school. I like that'd be bad. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Have you ever driven one of those big cranes, or at least got? I know you've been in them. I've operated a mobile crane before. One time when we were moving our shipping containers around our yard because of the when Hurricane Irma came by. Right. Yes, and that's that, the only time I've operated a crane. That had to be pretty neat. Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, a little birdie told me that you've got a new simulator coming. Is that true? Yes, sir. Have you gotten it yet? Uh, no, it hasn't come in yet, but I'm really excited for it to come in because I'm ready to hop on iRacing, get to these brand new tracks I'm going to be racing on during, for the rest of this year. Have you done a lot of iRacing before the simulator gets there? I mean, is it something that you've done? Do you have a, the wheel and pedals and stuff like this? Or when you get the simulator, will this no, be a whole new experience? A whole new experience. I've not had a steering wheel or pedals at all. You're gonna you're gonna have a lot of fun, man. You got a lot to learn though. There's a there's a lot of stuff out there, so uh, we can kind of help you shorten that learning curve a little bit, and I'll, I'll get you hooked up with some guys that uh, can really help over. So once you get started in that simulator, uh, I know you don't have any experience in it yet, but what do you expect to learn on the simulator that will actually carry over to the real race car? I think the simulator is going to help me with how, like on these tracks, how, like how far I can drive the car in and how fast my roll speed that I like the max I could have it and how quickly I can get back on the gas to get off the corner. And it also will help me with my line where I could drive, especially when it's like after the rain came, we, uh, we can find different lines to see which one's better to see how it would go. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing the amount of information and things that you can learn on that simulator. Um, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have a lot of fun, and, and I guarantee it's going to make you a much better driver. And, and your dad's going to be happy, too, or your mom and your dad, because there's no crash clause with a simulator. You just hit the reset button, and you don't have to pay anybody any money, so that's pretty cool. Yes, sir. All right, so let's talk about your 2019 season before we talk about 2020. What was your biggest highlight for 2019? Well, actually, in 2019, we have a lot of highlights, such as because we won the Big O Tribute back in August. We also we went in May to the G-Man Memorial Race, and we won both of those races in Pro Junior 2 and Pro Junior 3. We also traveled to the Midwest Max Daddy all the way over in Kansas, and we won three out of the five races there. And then we also, we won our first Legend Car and Pro Truck races at 417 Southern Speedway when I was 11. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Winning a Pro Truck race when you're 11 years old is quite an accomplishment. Now, you're currently racing this year, both Legend Cars and Pro Trucks. So give us a breakdown on how the two are different to drive. Well, a legend car is a, has 115 horsepower with um, a shorter wheelbase with a rack and pinion steering, other than a pro truck, which is powered by a 602 crate motor, which has 350 horsepower with power steering and larger wheels, tires. So tell us what your most memorable legend race was. My most memorable legend race has definitely got to be when I won my first race, which is only my third race in the legend car. And that just gave me a lot of confidence and it gave me a, a lot more encouragement to keep racing. So I know from experience having a lot of drivers that are in legend cars that have moved into pro trucks, have moved into late models. What do you think that you'll take from the legend car into the pro truck? And then the second part of this question is, there could be some bad habits that are in the legend car that you don't want to take to the pro truck. Well, in the legend car, it will help me with um, how the track feels because it senses a smaller car. You feel all this sensitive. It's like really sensitive. So you can feel all the bumps in the track. And so that will help me with uh, how the track handles and at like certain times of the day, then the track, then the truck is going to help me uh, just sense a bigger vehicle. It's um, it's gonna roll through that corner. You need to figure out how how hard you need to brake because in the legend car, 
need to brake real hard because it's a fast car. So going in there with that much speed, you're just going to spin out. So you got to manage your brakes just like the truck. And then the truck, you got to find good roll speed and how, how quickly you can get off the corner before the other dude. All right. So heading into the 2020 season, give us a little bit of peek of what that looks like moving forward. Well, in the 2020 season, we've actually got an offer from Doug Stevens for us to join his Legend Car team. And he wants us to run the, the, the summer series at Atlanta. And we're hoping to run that. And we are very excited to run with Doug Stevens because he's a really good racer in the Legend Cars. So with that being said, is there a track that you're really looking forward to in 2020? I'm really excited to go to Atlanta and Charlotte Motor Speedway. We are, because that is going to be very competitive. It will help us become a better driver. I'm also excited if we do go to Madeira this year uh, to run that junior late model challenge camp there. And um, because it's going to make us a better driver, it's going to get us a better opportunity to get uh, become bigger and better in the, in the racing. Yeah, let's hope that we get to put the junior late model camp on. Right now it's kind of up in the air, but um, let's talk about, have you ever been to Charlotte? Have you raced at Charlotte yet before? I have never raced in Charlotte before. Well, that will definitely be an experience. And like you said, the competition there is like off the chart. So uh, I, that that's gonna be great. Hopefully you'll get that simulator in and get to make a lot of uh, laps at Charlotte before you actually have to go there. Yes, sir. Well, let's move off the track a little bit and tell us something that most people wouldn't know about you. Well, most people may not know, but I do like to race other things besides race cars and go-karts. I like to uh, run, run, and I also like to race bikes. I also do drive four wheelers around i race that with my cousins around the yard and we also i uh, enjoy playing yahtzee with my family yahtzee that's interesting that's a that's a yes, strategy sir. game isn't it yes sir all right so what does gavin do when you're not racing besides riding bikes and playing yahtzee and stuff like that when i'm not racing i also like to ride my penny board around and i also um, play around with my cousins to make them happy. And then uh, we also go out to the racetrack and we watch other people race every once in a while. All right, so I'm an old guy. You're gonna have to explain to me what, you said a penny board? Yes, sir. All right, so tell me what that is. A penny board is just a smaller skateboard with a different shape. It's like a, it's like an oval, but with a little lip on the back with a thicker uh, wheels on it. All right, be careful on that. Don't want to get hurt on that skateboard so you miss any racing. Yes, sir. All right, so you'd like, before we end up tonight's interview, would you like to give a shout out to any of your sponsors? Uh, I'd like to thank Race Face Brand Development, Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, Diamondback Horse Brigade, Tire Crane Inspection Bureau, Wright Trailers, Little Gear Motorsports, Scott Walters Racing, my spotter Ed Howell, my Uncle Rodney, my grandpa, my mom and dad. And I also like to thank my friends, family, and all the fans and supporters who come out to support me at the racetrack. Well, Gavin, we want to thank you for being with us this evening. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, young Gavin Graham out of Lakeland, Florida, only 12 years old, one of the up and coming racers that's out there. If you want to know more information about Gavin, check him out on his website at gavingramracing.com. And while you're there, make sure to go into the fan zone and subscribe to his digital newsletter. Make sure to follow him on social media. And for all of you, if you've missed any of our episodes, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Again, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Go out, have a great race weekend. My name is Rod Wortham, and thank you for watching this episode of Race Face Spotlight.